Hello, fellow travelers, and welcome to the Traversing the Stars podcast. How are my loyal listeners? Thank you for your continued support. We have an amazing show for you all because we have the guy with the coolest name in cinema, boarding the mothership. His name is Eldar Scar, and he stars in The Northman. Now come join me as we go traversing the stars. Hello, Mr. Scar. It's a pleasure to talk with you. Thank you. Pleasure. You definitely had the coolest name. In Hollywood, Eldar Scar is, is one of those <laughs> names that is a movie name, like a, not just an actor name, but in the movie name. <laughs> oh, well, thanks. Yeah, I didn't have to audition for this part. They just uh, picked my name and said, come along. <laughs> well, I mean, I would imagine with a name like that, you have to be a badass. You can't just be like any regular guy with a name like that. Uh, you know, I have to disappoint you. I'm, I'm really just a humble uh, uh, there's, yeah, there's no, not a bad, bad fiber in my body, sorry to say. <laughs> no worries. So I, always, so I always start with a question of inspiration. So what inspired you to become an actor and who are your earliest influences? Oh, it's, uh, I have to say, I, I grew up in a, in a theater, theater family. Uh, my, my father was, uh, or is, uh, a theater director, and my mom is a props master at the theater. Uh, so I, I, early on, I got exposed to theater. And, um, and I started to make my own characters when I was going to school and I was fooling around and trying to make girls look at me, you know, so I was being <laughs> a clown. And then in, in a way, that kind of started it. But uh, I really didn't think I was going to be an actor until uh, I uh, suddenly was an actor when I was studying and uh, and I just thought well then I now I uh, I suppose I'll, I'll I'll try to go to an acting school so I did and I <laughs> and then I became I became an actor uh, influences I, I like um, <clears throat> uh, um, car- uh, really uh, you can say, uh, Daniel Day Lewis is is really uh, I really like him yeah. uh, uh, and uh, also Willem Dafoe. <laughs> <laughs> Willem Dafoe is awesome and everything he yeah. does, he yeah. he is like yeah. a human CGI effect. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. It's great. So so as you're saying, so when you're a little kid, you used to play pretend and play different characters. So yeah. how so what is the evolution between playing the different characters when you were a kid, and then becoming an actor i mean is it fine tuning that skill is it not losing that imagination that you had growing up how does that connect well it's uh, there's a lot of craft uh, when you you start to study it but w- when you play as a kid you're just fooling around and you're you, and you're playing with your imagination i i think that keeping that uh, a lot of that alive even though you're you Doing your craft and you learn your, your craft, you still have to uh, you have you still have to bring your your imagination, and that's a, that's a good thing. So I think those those world to, those world collided would be mm. perfect. So I read that um, while attending Oslo National Academy of the Arts, you trained in improv and the performing arts. So how did those two things turn you into the actor you are now? Well, uh, I think that um, uh, coincidences, because uh, uh, on the way you you start to make uh, start to make different projects with different people, uh, and you don't always like ah I want to work with it. It's it, it, it's it's um, it's by um, it's by chance often, but then you you often end up do. Uh, a lot of different things and uh, and even though it might be bad things you always learn things from it so mm-hmm. i think that it's 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 a lot of uh, just the eagerness to do do things and create something and and just doing something uh, always keeps you uh, evolved i think 
um, so, uh, but also, uh, you know, the, the, of course, uh, the class I went to, when, when I went for four years at the, uh, yeah, at acting school, I, I uh, we, uh, we were a really good class, like, um, uh, like a, a, what do you call it? Like a, a really um, uh, well-made gang. We, we were like, mm, uh, a really- click, Like a clique? Like yeah, like a really good click, and we 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 fed off each other, and we we actually decided to make a group. Off of the when we ended school, we actually started a new group, and that, that's that's, cool. that's weird because you're so tired of each other. <laughs> but, but, but then we, we because we uh, we found out that the only way to make things we want to make on our own is by making a group and doing mm. the things we want to do, and so we have been doing things uh, up through the years. Mm. For 10 I mean, years now yeah, yeah. And, I, and i read that you also have this great background in theater i mean you were in yeah. here you're in hamlet and i will say right now as a, as a high school teacher i've just started reading uh, hamlet with my students yeah. and it's a great place so how so who did you play in hamlet i played uh, polonius oh very uh, nice yeah. role <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. and now i'm actually doing shakespeare uh, uh 13th uh Oh, it's 12th, it's 12th night? 12th, 12th, 12th night, night, sorry, yes. sorry, yeah. Uh, and I recently learned that he actually wrote those plays uh, simultaneously. He was uh, writing both Hamlet and 12th night at the same, <laughs> same time. It's crazy. And I think he was in a deep uh, uh, depression because he had lost a kid and, you know. Mm. But 12th night is a comedy. Uh, but it's so dark, but it's still so funny because yeah, it has both uh, both worlds, like the light and the dark. Um, so yeah. I didn't, Sorry, I didn't what, what's the question? No, no, I, I, must admit, I didn't know he wrote them at the same time, but that, that's a yeah. that's a hell of a thing to, be able to pull off. So you know, when I'm not writing Hamlet, I'm busy writing Twelfth Night. It's yeah, like, right. Yeah, that's 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 fascinating. So playing Polonius, that must have been a, a great um, achievement for you. I mean, Shakespeare is the pinnacle for an actor. And as a stage actor, how difficult was was it for you to perform Shakespeare? It was uh, it was hard at the beginning uh, to, uh, to find. Um, uh, it's also because the, the way there was a German um, director, and he he had this idea of everything was like in the East Germany in the seventies. It was set like in the East Germany mm. in the seventies. So. It has had this specific uh, um, look and and uh, aesthetics uh, about it, and and uh, and that that's cool. Uh, but also, uh, it was hard to to break through the verses and and uh, and do the things he wanted, do the things he wanted because uh, he he wanted like a he wanted Polonius to be like a spastic, like a yeah, his mind was going in 120 and uh, yeah. it was uh, and with those verses and uh, to, to, yeah to try to break through those verses and do them like uh, uh, really um, just straight from a natural uh, yeah from the from the soul it was uh, was quite tough but um, at the end I think it was uh, at the end it was really fun so uh, that was a good thing so do you prefer stage acting or film acting Oh, good question. Uh, right now, I've been doing so much stage plays, uh, so I I, uh, I would like to go on a big movie again. It's been a <laughs> bit of a while. Yeah. You know, um, but I, I, I I like both. It's it's great to to do both. Mm. Well, well, I read that you were in a. Um, I never. I must admit, I didn't. I haven't heard about the the series until I did some research on you. But the more I was read about it, the more timely and fascinating it, it, it became. You were in a, in a Norwegian series called Occupied, is that correct? Yeah, yeah. And it was quite, like, quite big in, in the States, I think. Uh, uh, like I said, I must admit, I, I, unfortunately, um, I, I, I didn't see it, unfortunately. <laughs> no problem. But, um, but, 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 but what, for the listeners who um, may not know about it, um, it's about the Russian occupation of Norway. Yeah. And now, mm -hmm. obviously, in the real world right now, we have an occupation happening with Russia right now. Yeah. So, I mean, how relevant does that series feel now? And how, when, when you guys were filming it, were you thinking to yourselves, this is really feels like something that could happen? Like, did you even imagine something like that would be rel so relevant 
four years later, five years later? Actually, while we were filming it in 2015, uh, suddenly, like uh, a couple of weeks in uh, the beginning, they, uh, Russia started to uh, annex um, uh, uh, Crimea. Yep. So, so it, it du during the film because in the beginning it was like it's it's just an idea and Russia it's just used like an idea of and blah 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 but but suddenly they start to to annex and, uh, and went into Crimea and, and but it felt really it was absurd really absurd uh, um, but now uh, it's like uh, it's even more uh, yeah absurd it, there's, there's so many things in that series that. Uh, we were just playing with ideas, but but uh, it, it has really, yeah. Today the world is is really looking much more like that reality, and that's so strange. And so, now you see F Finland and and Sweden are suddenly beginning to talk about NATO and yeah, yeah. So so when you made um, <clears throat> looking back at what you did in Occupied, do you? I mean, do you feel that? The, like the weight of the, of what you were doing, like when you, because I said as you're doing it, Crimea was being annexed by Russia. Did the kind of did that add extra weight and responsibility to what you guys were doing to make sure it was as believable as possible, and or at least a, very much a commentary as well of what could be. Yeah, I, I was, uh, uh, and also had the feeling that the people who, who made it, uh, they were really, uh, they were anxious to, to not like. Uh, Take a take a clear side, you know, uh, yeah. because or like uh, um, it's like we 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 didn't want to make like this classical spy Russian villains uh, like like Cold War war movies, uh, mm. which we all have seen for, for of course. But we wanted to like uh, um, look at the gray sounds and you know, um, but then again, they are they are the aggressor. And, in the series, uh, but there also are, are ordinary versions portrayed in the series, which are really you get sympathetic with them. Yeah, mm. But but uh, and my my character is is hap uh, happens to uh, uh, fall in between uh, both the Russian side and the Norwegian side, and tries to be like a, uh, a moderator or like a, um, a, a peacekeeper. But then I always it it switches so. Um, and I can, uh, yeah, I can, uh, I can sympathize with that that character now more maybe than when I played it. It's like, yeah, I, but it's uh, absurd. I mean, I kind of feel like what's what's going on in the real world gives Occupied a second life because once again, yeah, they can probably. look at that show, look at what's happening, and there really is it, it feels more allegorical now that to yeah. what's to what's going on. Yeah, a lot of Norwegian critics left. Uh, at the really? Like, uh, what is this? Uh, this is not possible, and this is just, just so. Uh, but then again, it was. It's just fiction. You don't have to like. It's not. We're right. not telling you it's going to happen tomorrow. But then suddenly things start to happen, and now I think that series would would have been like, uh, yeah, they wouldn't laugh at it at the same I, way. I will say it's probably the saddest. I told you so. That's owed to them. That was yeah. ever was ever said. Yeah, yeah uh, absolutely. Because Occupy has become so relevant based on what's going on in the real world, has it changed your perspective on the value of art and the impact it, it could have in creating discussion and to inform people of what could be? Yeah, I'm still a believer in, in uh, art in that way. Well, I have to because I, <laughs> I work with it. I have to believe in it. But uh, I, I do, I really do. Uh, I think uh, art can make make people uh, on, on uh, it, it would different ideas and different uh, different people, different kind of people and uh, different backgrounds and all the way uh, meet and and have a, it's a way, a good, really good way of communicating without like uh, going to a political discussion, but you can, it's, 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 yeah, we are humanity and we can, we can, we can find, uh, we can find ways to, to communicate and, and, and be together. Uh, so both both in like uh, uh, acting together or uh, doing working together with art or also uh, experiencing art. Uh, so so um, I think it's uh, yeah, I think it's really important. 
and mm. these times uh, it's so interesting but <clears throat> uh, well your country is so uh, we we look at you and we we think of you as uh, you're so polarized yes. and it's so it's so it's so um, it's so much more clear now than it might have been like 15 20 years ago now it's it's really it's so it feels to us like it's really polarized and i also I imagine what it's like it, when it's being here it feels uh, yeah, even more yeah. that way <laughs> yeah yeah and and i think uh yeah we need we need art we need uh really really need, need it to to find our i, I yeah, don't I mean, it, it kind of interests, like, you know, people, those people who may not have given maybe the respect to, to the arts as they deserve, when you look at what's going on with COVID as well, and then this, art has played such an important role over the last few years of making, one, people get through the hard times like COVID, and yeah. also, you know, once again, open discussion of what's going on right now in the world as well. And I, and I do wonder if people are now viewing art as, as importantly as they should have always yeah that's a good question so what, what when you're looking for your roles in the future do you hmm. seek out roles that are projects of impact or are you looking for something more enter for entertainment what what are your goals i i think that uh, it, it always will be um, um uh, the big picture will 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 uh, always be the like uh, what <clears throat> what's this uh, what's this part or what, what what's this project what's this what does this project want what, what is this project um, uh, has it got something to tell uh, is it important um, then I might then I might uh, trump uh, the idea of you know, earning a lot of money uh, or you know I can then I can do it for for less money if it, right, I feel right. it's really important this this is something important to to say it's it it will uh, yeah it will but then again I'm a family man I have two young children of course I have to earn money so, <laughs> so it's almost this fight. <laughs> but in a in an ideal world i would just choose the, the yeah the good uh, projects well, well your, re your recent project the northman is a great yeah. movie it, it was it's fantastic and it's um how it's filmed my wife absolutely loves it uh to death um and you played uh finner the uh, snub nose in the northman now once again we're talking about important roles the movie is based on a Scandinavian legend of Amleth, I think is how you pronounce the name. Yeah. So how important was this movie for you to um, participate in it? It was, uh, it was a really uh, uh, once in a lifetime chance. Uh, and and uh, uh, when I studied, uh, when I heard about the project, I, I, I never heard about Robert Eggers before. Um, so I, I uh, after I got the role, I watched his two uh, two earlier movies, and I became a fan because uh, <laughs> yeah, he's he's really good, and uh, and he comes from this the art house and the indie movie uh, background, and but it's his uh, vision is so clear and so um, yeah. Uh, so I really uh, that was like really magnetic to me. Uh, so uh, yeah, of course. Then I I had uh, got got the role and they got financial uh, situation in order and we had go and then COVID hit. So we had like four months uh, <laughs> extra preparation or whatever. Um, but but I was uh, and, and during the time working with him maybe also because of COVID we uh, we spent I spent a lot, a lot more time on set and uh, and where we were shooting um, we couldn't travel that much and and we were much more when we were on set we were like a I think much more like <clears throat> community based because uh, when we were not at the set when we were at the hotel rooms we were we. We couldn't go out. We just had to sit alone on the hotel rooms. So when we were joined by others, we we, we were like uh, right. unity. So uh, and uh, but also he it was so great um, 
to uh, and it's something when he talked he talked about all the uh, details on my costumes and my knife and my sword and where it was found it's it was found in Finland and blah 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 and it was like wow he he knows everything every detail on every thing you're wearing and all your knives and everything uh, and I really I, I'm not a Norwegian. Uh, yeah. This is the time I've never learned as much uh, about Viking uh, Vikings as I did uh, on the Northman. So <laughs> <laughs> it was great. So when when he's giving you, I mean, once again, the story takes place in 10th century Iceland, I believe. Yeah. Um, when when something like uh, when the director gives you all those details, being where the knife comes from, the costume, all this other stuff, how do you incorporate that as an actor? What does that do for you in your performance? Well, it gave me uh, it gave me a specific, like a specific uh, feeling of being somebody specific. Uh, Finner is, was my name. So no stuff. There's no like background detail, but I knew that my knife was found in Finland and my sword was. So it was like ah, this kind of. I had a feeling this this is this is already somebody has worn this, and I'm now putting uh, my my skin. From this person on <laughs> myself, so it was like, uh, and also on the set you're immersed with uh, a Viking village. There's uh, everything is as real as it can be, so mm -hmm. it feeds it. You you feed off it. Uh, so um, it was kind of easy to get into the mode when you're on the set. Well, yeah. I mean, the movie was shot. I mean, it was, it was fascinating watching how the movie was, you know, shot from from the camera work. Yeah. Uh, once again, as you mentioned, the movie's directed by Robert Egg um, Eggers. Um, I think what I found fascinating about the shoot was that, and I may be wrong in this, I may be just in my own head, but when I was watching it, I felt it was shot differently than I've seen a movie shot in a long time. Like, yeah. like shots were, they held, he held onto one shot much longer than in movies currently. Like usually nowadays, edits every couple of seconds, edit, 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 edit. Yeah. He stays on a shot. He actually does these long tracking shots. I mean, as someone who is a, has experience as a theater actor, how did that background help you in this type of environment of shooting? It was great because uh, you, the way, as you said, the way they shoot, mo most of the scenes are shot on a crane uh, and are longer takes, uh, long takes. Uh, so everything has to match, everything has to be timed, everything has to be, have a feel, have a flow, have a rhythm. Uh, uh, and as a, my thea as a theater, with theater backgrounds, I, I, I think every, everybody who had theater backgrounds. Advantage? Advantage, thank you. No, no worries. As, yeah. So, uh, um, yeah, I, and it's so fun because uh, as an actor, you feel that uh, you're not you're caught up and uh, put into places you don't want to be. You're, <laughs> it's, it's, your, it's your time, it's your reading, it's your rhythm, and it's, mm. it's there. And you won't cut, be cut out of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, great. So, I mean, so does it feel more natural to perform in that way instead of the short cut scenes? Yeah, it does. Uh, yeah. You know, and, and the other thing I found a lot with Eggers uh, watching The Northman is the dialogue. It had a sort of Shakespearean style to it. Yeah. And once again, having played Hamlet and in Twelfth Night, uh, was, did you also feel that gave you an advantage in doing the lines? And was, did it, were, was it difficult to handle the, the, the lines the way the ring? Once again, it kind of has an older style feel to it. Yeah, my, uh, I, th I think I didn't think so much about the, the way it was written. That I, uh, basically, the, what I worked most on was uh, talk like I had no nose. So my uh, more than uh, also the dial uh, like the the way the the language and the dialect mm. in a way, but but uh, mostly what I worked worked on with our, uh, with the language uh, director or the the, the guy who yeah uh, taught us the language was the way I was the sound mm. uh, was coming out of my face. Because a lot of people thought, uh, think that it's a nasal sound, but when you have no nose, there's no nasal sound, so it's just <laughs> air flowing. And, uh, and the balance between uh, talking weirdly uh, and making peop uh, people understand what you, what you say was 
it was really a, a fight. But, but Rob Legers he really let me bring it far out. And then, of course, in ADR, we had to like adjust some things because yeah. because the studio was going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but he actually kept it quite, yeah, yeah, almost uh, as the way we we shot it. So yeah. So so how did you finally decide upon the, the sound? For your voice that you wanted for this character for Finner, I think it was. Uh, uh, um, I think, it, uh, of course, uh, together with the, the guy who, who was teaching me how to talk without a nose, and and uh, but also it's it's something about uh, uh, yeah the this the sound of it and and uh, after do, uh, do, is doing shouting and screaming. Uh, uh, because that's a lot of what my character do because he shouts a lot to the slaves so yeah it would it, it would have been you uh, blowing his uh you know voice a lot so um so uh, yeah i found some of uh, quite early you know uh but uh yeah after, after shouting without a nose <laughs> just just then it just appeared <laughs> it's a it's a fascinating new skill that you have now you know how to talk yeah to if you ever lose your nose you're fine <laughs> if I get hired with those skills, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I will uh, yeah, I celebrate. Mean, and also the cast of the Northmen is tremendous. I mean, you have William Dafoe, Ethan Hawke, Nicole Kidman, <clears throat> Alexander Skar Skarsgård. What was the experience on set surrounded by so many um, prestigious actors? Yeah, uh, it was great. Back to what I talked about earlier, because I think because of COVID and the situation and we, we uh, everybody had to be like in a hotel room when we didn't shoot. And so when we shot, uh, we were shooting, we, we, it was, it was like a, we were like excited to be together. And, and, uh, and also the, like the, the big stars, like Alexander is like the greatest, coolest guy like a don't to earth uh mm. so, so any swedish so we could we could talk a bit uh, we could understand <laughs> without switching to it but we mostly talk the english anyways but but um uh yeah so cool uh, and uh i, I was kind of starstruck when i met william defoe but uh i just met him it was just one day when i was shooting and uh yeah. did the elbow and and i just started to stare at him and, uh, yeah he, I think he was like being self-aware. Uh, <laughs> so you freaked out. Anyway. So you freaked out William Defoe. I think I freaked him out. Yeah. <laughs> That's all right. At least, at least I remember. But like, who the fuck is this guy who keeps staring yeah. at me? Yeah. <laughs> Weirdo. <laughs> that's pretty, that's yeah, really yeah. funny though. <laughs> yeah. So what did so what did that whole experience teach you being around uh, this crew and, and like I said, and these actors where you were? You know. Uh, it taught me that uh, everybody is everybody's human, and uh, and um, people are people. It, they're not uh, like this big star uh, because I, uh, I I also had like ideas. That, um, a lot of the big big names they would be like uh, too good for other low, low lives but but they're really really <laughs> nice people at least this cast was really really nice people uh yeah and, and because it's such once again the, the environment too is so physical yeah how hard was it to train and prepare to be in this film i trained a hell of a lot uh, riding horses but uh i just rode once in, in one scene so uh yeah, but there, there was a lot of preparation. It was mm. there was a lot of uh, horse riding, a lot, lot of uh, stunt rehearsals, uh, and um, uh, but I don't think I did the most of those things. I didn't do uh, a lot of stunt things. But um, there's a lot of long scenes with uh, semi action, and you have to be like super prepared. So mm. of course, so we did it uh, plenty of times. Uh, and then it was like uh, we did some some uh, readings beforehand, and uh, but then again, also it's like in a room you're like in a in a room uh, with a office desk, and okay, this is the scene. You're coming from that hill, and you're going. <laughs> so you you have to go like okay, so three meters away. Okay, you come now. You're coming from this. Let's just fake that you're coming yeah. from that hill. 
like 500 meters away. So it was like, yeah, okay, but it's good to just l- let's just talk about the scene. But uh, mm. but uh, it's like it's it's impossible to to prepare uh, without being on the set. That's when you, yeah, that's when you see what you're gonna do. <laughs> so so as Finner, you had your nose cut off by by the kid, um, yeah. and. I assume it was a CGI nose, not makeup. It wasn't prosthetic. It was yeah, a CGI. Thanks God. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, is it is it hard to act with whatever they had covering up your nose? Did you feel did you feel kind of like funny, or did you just get used to it? No, it was just dots in my face. Just dots. 20, 20, 32 dots in my face. So it's like, uh, and people were like, "Is that war? Is it war paint or what? <laughs> what is, is those dots?" <laughs> Um, but I'm really glad they did the dots and not the the prosthetics. Yeah, prosthetics. <laughs> that would be because it was talking about prosthetics. But that that would be like four or five hours. I think. I would imagine. I don't know how you even would lose a nose in prosthetics. I mean, I'm sure the the they would figure it out, but that would be yeah. probably really uncomfortable for you. Yeah. So so where can our listeners find the Northmen in in the states? Uh, I think that now it's uh, yeah it's. It's just ended on uh, cinema, right? Mm-hmm. So um, I, I think that uh, Amazon Prime. Yep. I think uh, we'll have it. Uh, and there's a lot. There's a bunch of things I've, uh, I just saw um, uh, display of, of some of the. But, but that, uh, there's a lot of things I've never heard about. But uh, yeah, uh, Apple TV. Yeah, I think TV? Uh, they will have it. Um, and probably a lot, a lot more. But um, yeah. And, like, and you know, like I said, my it was a great movie. My my, my wife loved it. It it it's it's a weird movie, but it's really entertaining. And yeah. I th- I think it's a movie that it, it's 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 odd. It's it's like an epic scale action movie filmed by a very auteur indie filmmaker. And I think we've seen something like that in a long, long time. Yeah, true. Yeah, and I, when we were starting to shoot, I also thought that this is even though I'm not. That's super experienced, not, at least not in those big, mm. uh, big movies. But but this is gonna be something special because yeah, that crane again. We're doing and everything is on the film, and it's like there's just just one camera all the time. So there's no chance of like backup or right. <laughs> yeah. crazy. But uh, yeah, it was really fun. I mean, it, it definitely looks it. Like I said, the scale is unbelievable. And yeah. I hope, hope they get around to, to, to do a sequel and you know explore the story further. Um, what are you working on next? Now I'm, uh, well, this theater. And then I'm doing, a, now I'm actually doing a comedy series here in Nor- Norway. So it's, it's uh, just a car. Um, I just have a smaller part in it. But uh, I haven't done so, I haven't done much comedy. And I think that, that would be fun to do. So, so we'll see. So how, how, how do you prepare for comedy? I mean, is there, is, how different is that from doing the dramatic roles for you? Not, not that big difference, actually, because uh, uh, the more serious you take your character, I think the more funny, as long as the situations are funny. Right, uh, right, right. Just have to believe in that character, and then it will be funny as hell. <laughs> well, Mr. Scar, you're fantastic to talk with, and hopefully... Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, Andrew.